Welcome back to the Prillworks channel. I'm getting started on the largest project I've done so far. It's going to be a large apothecary chest, similar to the ones I've done before, except this one's going to have 21 drawers along with 7 shoe cubbies. So let's get started. I spent a good amount of time getting everything rough cut and resawn. Pretty much every piece on this project has some sort of book matched feature. The outside casework consists of 12 inch wide panels that were book matched from Corusan Sapili. All the drawer fronts came from the same board, which gave it a nice continuous grain across each row. And each of the drawer boxes came from book matched ash panels. And the reason I do the book matched outside of the aesthetic reasons is I don't have enough joiner capacity to joint these wide boards. So cutting them down to four and six inch wide pieces allows me to joint them reliably, get them planed down and glued up for panels. After getting a nice jointed edge on each piece, I was able to glue these up into panels. This is one of the short sides, and the glue up was pretty uneventful. I used these calls in the middle to keep everything from bowing. I could have used dowels to align these nicely, but I didn't feel it was needed. When I glued up the longer ones, it was a little bit more difficult because I had to add more calls, but these panels ended up coming out pretty nice. I originally wanted to use solid sapili for the dividers. But I took a practical approach and I found these pine panels that were already pre-laminated. They're in relatively good shape, they're already flat, didn't have much warp or twist to them. These ended up saving me a lot of time, money, and they made the cabinet a little less heavy than it would have been with Sapili. I put a nice jointed edge on these and then added about half inch or three quarters inch worth of Sapili as edge banding. I just put some glue on and used blue tape to clamp it down. After all of my sapili and pine panels were ready to go, I got them planed down to the same thickness. Because the pine panels were already three quarters of an inch, I needed to take a little bit of material off of them to get them nice and flush. So all of these panels ended up being about 0.72 inches thick. Each corner of the cabinet has seven dowels, which provide a ton of strength and also keep the pieces lined up for the glue up. I use the dowel max system for this. I recently purchased it just for this project. It made things pretty easy. You start at one end with the jig flushed up at the end of the board, drill your holes, and then you can use this little alignment pin to reference off your previous holes so that everything is spaced out evenly.
I decided to use the router to cut all the dados for this project. I figured that it would be a little bit cumbersome to take these large panels to the table saw and cut all the dados, so I decided to take the tool to the workpiece. I made this jig out of some 3 quarter inch plywood, and I had it set to cut a .73 inch wide dado, which gave me 10 thousandths of an inch wiggle room for the workpiece to slide in. And this ended up being a pretty solid fit. With glue, it swells up and it's a perfect fit. The only thing I would do next time is I would probably make a jig that references off the previous dado cut. That way the spacing is guaranteed to be what I need it to be. With this little spacer that I used, I was marking a line and then lining up the jig with that line. And this was, had too much room for error. And I ended up having some of my drawers being a 16th or a 32nd of an inch off. And this led to some of the dividers being out of square. After getting the joinery and dados cut for the outside casework, I did a dry fit to make sure everything lined up nicely. This also gave me the opportunity to get the dividers cut to their final length. I could look at my SketchUp file and see how long they're supposed to be, but that doesn't always work out, so it's good to take measurements relative to your actual work base. I went ahead and got the rest of those dados cut and then got ready for this glue up. I knew this was going to be a long and hectic glue up, so I got a glue with a longer open time. I ended up using Typon's hide glue, which ended up working out well, although it is kind of sticky stuff and annoying, but it's easy to clean up, so it's not that big of a deal. I had to go out and buy some longer clamps because most of my clamps are 6, 12, and 18 inches. I have a couple 24 inch clamps, but I needed some clamps that were over 36 inches, and so I went out and got some 36 and 40 inch clamps. I use these pipe clamps for the long widths, and those little dividers I put in in the middle were just there to keep the pieces from sagging. And then I also installed two dividers which I could clamp against, and this just made sure that the dados were fully seated. I went ahead and got all the dividers cut up and did a full dry fit. If you saw my previous apothecary chest video, you'll know that I didn't do a dry fit and that glue up was kind of hectic, so I learned my lesson and did one here. Unfortunately, like I mentioned before, not all of my dados were cut as precisely as they needed to be, so some of these dividers were out of square. You'll see during the glue up that one of them was particularly difficult to get installed, and even later on in the video you'll see what happens because of these dados that were cut out of square. It's pretty frustrating, but I got everything to work out nicely, and the errors aren't too noticeable. This glue up wasn't too bad. I have 24 dividers to install, and 23 of them went in pretty easily. The last one you'll see was way too snug. It was one of those dividers that was out of square because of the dados I cut. I had to take a block plane to trim some of the edges, but I was able to get it in with a few hits from the mallet. This was one of those points in the project where you start to feel things to come together. Before I just had a bunch of panels and an open case. Now I have all the dividers installed and you can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel.
This shot's a little bit out of order, but while I was working on the cabinet, I was also gluing up these panels for the drawer boxes and the drawer fronts. I had about 25 of these to do, so I was consistently gluing these up as I had the clamps available for them. After that, I could get started on the actual drawer construction. I got all of the drawer material planed down to about a half inch thick. Then I took it to the table saw to get it ripped down to its final width, which would dictate the height of the drawer. I wanted to sneak up on this because you want a relatively snug fit because you can always come back with a block plane and trim it down later. Because some of these dividers were out of square, I had to make sure that each drawer front was cut precisely to fit its own cubby. And that was why it was important to make sure that I labeled everything correctly, which would also preserve the grain match across each row. After I did that, I could move on to cutting the joinery. I'm using a half blind lock joint for the drawer joinery. I made a separate video that goes into more detail on how I cut this joint, and I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in watching it. I used a simple housing joint for the back piece of the drawer, and then it was time to glue them all up. I only have so many clamps that are over 8 inches, which was what was needed for these boxes. So I did sets of three gluing these up. I would glue them up, let them dry, and then move on to the next set. So this took a couple days to get them all glued up. But the good thing about these joints is they're interlocking, so they square themselves up nicely. Fitting all 21 of these drawers actually took a fair amount of time. I used the block plane to trim up the ends of the drawer fronts, which I left slightly proud. And then I also trimmed up the tops and bottoms until I got a nice solid fit. As a result of some of the mistakes I made with the dados and out of square dividers, a few of these short dividers unseated themselves by about a sixteenth of an inch. The best thing I could come up with was to clamp the gap shut and drive some screws in. I know. Throwing screws into end grain is not ideal, but it was the best thing I could come up with. Trust me, this is not my favorite part of the project, and it sort of pained me to do this. But I did cover them up with some walnut plugs, so now it looks a little bit more decorative. And I also made some homemade wood filler with glue and sapili sawdust to fill in any other gaps that might have shown themselves. I wanted the base to be a little less ornate than the previous one I made, so these are going to be all rectangles for the stretchers and legs. I used a dowel max again for the joinery, and here I'm inserting a 3 8 inch spacer, and this gives a 3 8 inch reveal between the stretcher and the legs. I 
I gave the base and underside of the cabinet three coats of white bomb poly because I knew they'd be hard to reach after I got the cabinet flipped upright. And I used tabletop fasteners, which allows the wood in the cabinet to move freely without being restricted by the base. By this point, I'd already flipped this cabinet over a few times, so I knew I could handle the weight, but I hadn't done it with the base attached, so this added six inches of height to it, which made it a lot more difficult. You'll see that I was able to do it, but this was probably the most stressful part of the project. I used white bomb poly for the finish. I applied three thin coats with a brush and also with a shop towel depending on what part of the cabinet it was. After the first and second coat I sanded with a thousand grit paper which is a lot higher than I usually do. I usually use 320 or 400 but I was pretty happy with the results so I'll probably continue doing that. After the third coat I knocked down any dust nibs with 4-0 steel wool and this brought it back down to a satin or a matte sheen. And that about wraps this one up. These drawers had a nice piston fit after I put the back in. If you've made it this far in the video, I appreciate it. I put a lot of hours into this project, so thank you for watching.